Hi kids, so now let us discuss about the drug testing in the laboratory. So basically, we will be discussing about the facility, the personnel, and how drug tests are performed. And this will be the last topic for our Clinical Chemistry 2 laboratory subject. So to start off, let us discuss about how a facility should be constructed. And there is actually a difference between if the facility being built is a screening drug testing center or a confirmatory drug testing center. So for a screening center, it should be at least 20 square meters floor area with a 10 square meter working area. For the confirmatory, it should be at least 60 square meters floor area with a 30 square meters working area. But both, whether it is a screening or confirmatory drug testing center, both should accommodate at least five patients at a time and that there should be a hand washing area and toilet stalls. So when collecting for specimens, so that is actually the reason why there should be toilet stalls in a drug testing center because in terms of collecting specimen for testing, it should really be done at the drug testing facility. But there are certain exceptions for the rule. Uh, and these are the following so in so it could be a uh, specimen could be collected outside the facility when uh, in a workplace school jail or prison rehabilitation center if for random checking random check checking of uh, urine samples kids are very important because if an individual is being told to be tested for drug screening or uh, drug screening sometimes uh, this certain individual will try their best to prepare in such a way that their test would be negative and when we do random testing siya yung parang pinaka effective na way na para masakpan good ang isa ka individual if they are really using illegal drugs as for your follow up checkup uh, it could be done uh, especially to those employees or individuals that tested positive for using illegal substances and then mag follow up testing para makita if nag negative na ba and they can now return to their duties. And then if my reasonable suspicion or cause crime scene and post accident. And of course, those individuals who are critically ill or disabled, syempre hindi na natin ipush na dapat talaga pupunta sila sa facility. Uh, we could just advise na may someone na uh, tutulong sa kanya to do the collection and then a transport lang din po papunta doon sa facility. So in these cases, sample validi validity must be performed and these are the parameters for validity test. So we need to take note of the color, the appearance, the odor, the volume, even the temperature, pH, and the specific gravity. In terms of the color and appearance, uh, that would really matter because there are really cases, di ba, na hindi naman talaga always yellow yung green. Sometimes it could be a little lighter or it could be white depending on how much water intake uh, a person did. And in terms of the appearance, uh, depende din po kasi baka may underlying condition yung ating patient. It will not always be clear. Sometimes it could be cloudy. Lalo na if may UTI yung patient. As to the odor, it should really be aromatic. Wala naman atang urine na hindi ammoniacal yung odor. And then for the volume, this is really what is prescribed. Dapat nasa 30 to 60 ml and usually it should really be 60 ml. As for the temperature, it really matters kasi we really need to perform drug testing na fresh yung sample. And then for the pH, that is 4 to 9. And then for the specific gravity, that is 1.003 to 1.030. So those are actually the normal ranges of our urine pH and specific grav. So depende na lang din po na we could actually correlate the pH and specific grav as to the underlying condition of the patient. Now, tampering of specimens are also commonly being done when doing tests for the presence of a drug. So these are examples of tampering of specimens. So you have your adulteration, dilution, and substitution. 
So for adulteration, this is a sub uh, this is by adding a certain substance that is not normally present in a test specimen. So for example, addition of a juice or illicit drugs just to make your uh, result negative. So syempre, once mag-aad kayo ng juice, of course it should be of the same color of the urine. Uh, uh, syempre, magkakaroon ng certain changes sa composition and what so happened is that high likely talaga yung chances na mag-negative yung ating result. Taking of drug screens like aspirin, niacin, and zinc sulfate which interfere with drug analysis. So that is why uh, before drug test is being done, actually my slight interview and uh, writing or answering of forms for kids for drug testing and one thing that should be noted is really the medications being taken by the patient so tinatanong po talaga if ever may mga drugs ba na minamaintain or even as simple as the vitamins that you have taken tina take note din po siya because there are really cases that when you are regularly taking them or Due to, due to the presence of these certain na mga vitamins, pwede siya makakos na bakit mag-negative. And it is actually a way of confirming na bakit talaga nag-negative yung sample ng patient. So, pwede natin i-look into the history na ah, kasi nagtatake siya nito and then uh, i-advise yung patient na the next time na magpa-drug test, dapat within maybe 24 hours or within how many days, hindi po muna magtatake ng anything or any other drugs. Just to really make sure that the negative result is really negative. Doping of samples is also common, like when you add certain chemicals to the urine. For example, bleach, ammonia, liquid soap, table salt, hydrogen peroxide, or even vinegar. Since these substances could also cause our testing to be negative. So, pero meron siyang negative na effect dun sa ating testing na ginagawa. As for the dilution, less than normal physiological constituents and there are two different types, internal or external. I'm not quite sure but you might actually heard na whenever a certain individual, di ba, na magpa drug test ba, or even as simple as yung mga immuno assays, like even nung COVID, na hala, mudag, muinom mong daghan na water para lang yun madilute internally ang urine. So, syempre, kung daghan kay kaginom mo na tubig, ang expected mang yun, Ana, na ibong iihi is diluted mang yun. And due to that internal dilution, that could also cause na mag-negative yung result nyo because there are plenty of water compared to the solutes that should be measured by our test. Pwede din external dilution like Literally, you're adding water to your specimen and, syempre, causing dilution pa rin. So, that is actually the reason why uh, dun sa drug testing center kits, although there is a hand washing area, it should really be far from the kung saan yung toilet, kung saan yung CR, and you are directly observed by the staff para makita lang yun na wala mo anything kababalaghan na buhaton. Even in the toilet area, kung saan kayo magkokolek ng ihi, kung saan kayo iihi, uh, walang any water source. And even dun sa toilet bowl, uh, yung water na andun is actually being added with a coloring na coloring agent. Dapat iba yung color talaga nung water dun sa bowl from, uh, from the urine sample. Kaya para diligid siya magamit na pang tamper sa, in- sa sample or sa specimen. Substitution also, wherein there is submission of switch or replace sample. So that is why prior to uh, testing kids or a prior or prior to doing uh, collection of the specimen, sina search talaga yung body ng individual and hindi po pinapadala yung bag because there are really cases na nagdala na dig da ng sample si patient and then mo to ihang isubmit kumbaga atik-atik lang siya mangihi kuno pero nana day siya katong isa isubmit niya na sample na sure na negative good remember we are trying to measure the use of illegal substances here so there are really individuals that will try their best na mag negative good kasi kung positive then syempre uh, ano na dayon na may iba na dayo na naga illegal drugs sila so increase yun ang chances na makulong. As for the personnel, 
there are difference in terms of the head and the analyst if screening or confirmatory na facility. So for the screening na facility, then pwede ra yung clinical pathologist or any licensed physician with certification in clean lab management by the DOH. And in terms of these pathologists, they can actually handle up to a maximum of 10 screening labs as long as it is within 5 kilometer radius. For the confirmatory facility, it should either be a physician or pathologist with two years experience in analytical toxicology or a chemist with a master's degree and two years experience in analytical chem. So how about the analyst? In a screening center, by the chemist, medtech pharmacist, or chemical engineer as long as they are trained. And for the confirmatory, what is really required are full-time chemists with training in chromatography and mass spectroscopy and either a medtech, pharmacist, or chemical engineer with training in screening. The personal verify chain of custody, perform tests, certify results, and perform quality assurance. Now, let me just point out, not because you already have your professional license, yung tipong RMT ka na, pwede ka na mag-perform ng drug test. Again, kids, this is with a special training. There is a separate certificate for this one uh, indicating that you can really be able to perform this test. Ang dami po nating mga special area in the lab na dapat pinaperform ng mga uh, medtechs na nag-undergo talaga ng training. Like for example, your malaria, your HIV, your AFB. Yan sila special areas. Yan sila na ipong kung hindi ka trained or wala ka talaga ng certificate, then hindi ka talaga pwede mag-perform. We also have your authorized specimen collectors wherein they can instruct, assist, and receive or inspect specimens. So they are only limited to that job description because then again, yung mga authorized specimen collector kasi kids, they are not necessarily professional but as long as uh, trained sila for that area. May ganun. And actually, uh, during my work in the laboratory, meron kaming authorized specimen collector and minsan, uh, sila talaga yung tinatawag natin, namin in order to instruct, assist, and receive or inspect specimen. But nakalimit lang dun. By the time na kailangan na ng testing, then ikaw pa rin po yung magperform. Now, in drug testing, there should be proper documentation, kids, and there are actually two different forms that you will get to encounter. One is the chain of custody document, and the other is the custody and control form. For the chain of custody document, this actually refers to procedures to account for each specimen by tracking its handling and storage. Kumbaga, from point of collection to the final disposal, lahat-lahat ng tao na involved, sinusulat yung name and dapat may signature. So, this is a form used to document the security of the specimen and all alley codes of the specimen during testing and storage. And ayan kids, so it should include the names and signatures of all individuals who handle the specimen. And there should be a date and the purpose of access being indicated. As for the custody and control form, so dito po nakalagay yung info ng patient which includes now your chain of custody document. So, this is a BHFS approved form used to document the collection, transport, security, and test result of the specimen. BHFS stands for your Bureau of Health Facilities and Services. So, other than the COC document, donor's info should be there. Even the status of your specimen, like the temperature and appearance, drug test requested, kasi there are actually a lot of parameters. So, baka po yung patient gusto niya at this certain parameter lang, so pwede. And then, test result. Now, these are the different types of specimens that can be used in order to check presence of a certain drug. But the most common one will always be your urine. Most common, and if you think about it, siya din naman kasi yung pinaka- uh, kumbaga, yung collection is painless and non-invasive, hindi maselan. So, okay na din po yung urine. And as you can see, kids, iba as stated a while ago, 60 ml talaga yung needed na sample. And if in case, na kailangan siya store for quite a long time, so it should be placed it in, it, in a negative 20 degrees Celsius na temperature. So, it should be collected in a 30 to 60 ml polyethylene specimen container. Next, we could ask, actually also make use of a saliva 
in which around 2 ml of saliva should be collected and still placed in a polyethylene specimen container. But kids, in terms of saliva testing, it is only effective when detecting res uh, for a recent drug use. And you should be suitable if we're thinking of yung mga certain individuals na chronic na yung kanilang use sa mga illegal drugs. And syempre, pag chronic, there may be case na by this point in time, basi ding wala sa sila nag-take, so lisod yun mo gamit sa saliva. Next, blood sample could also be used, but as stated here, kids, no standardized procedure available. So, wala po talaga tayong proper protocol, and I think wala din po tayong mga testing kits or any analyzers na makaperform ng measurement ng drug by using your blood sample. And it is actually expensive, although it is the most accurate one. So if in case na uh, mag blood sample testing, a plain test tube should, should be used, and uh, minimum of five ml, maximum of ten ml na blood sample. Sweat can also be used, and these are actually common sa mga athletes na sweat yung kanilang uh, sample na. Uh, I ask na dapat e submit and what is placed is actually a sweat patch that should be worn within one to two weeks. So this is an example of your sweat patch. So tipong ayan lang siya kids so patch lang yun siya and then dili yun dapat siya removed within one to two weeks para yung sweat there is really enough uh, number or volume of sweat na magdamp dun sa patch. And then we also have hair, which is around 100 milligrams of hair in 200 milligrams capacity self-sealing transparent plastic bag. So the problem with hair, although it is best in detecting chronic substance abuse, but it is quite expensive and tedious yung kanyang processing. So when handling specimen, collection should really be observed. So na mention ko po to kanina na. Uh, collection is directly observed, meaning to say, even during the time na iihi kayo dun sa banyo, may personal po talaga na titingin sa inyo. Every, everything that you do, from the hand washing before and after to the collection, you are being observed. Just to really check na hindi nyo po talaga itatamper yung inyong specimen. And then, you need to ensure integrity of your urine specimen, so that is why coloring agents are being placed in your toilet bowl. Or bowl, so ba na pag pronounce? Kasi para hindi siya gagamitin for tampering, there should be removal of unnecessary outer garments and a body search should be done prior to the collection. Kasi baka may tinago po dun sa kasingit-singitan ng body, then at least makuha and then ma-avoid yung tampering. And then washing and drying of hands prior to urination should be done. Prior to urination, kids, because... Uh, isa sa nauso manggod sa una ang magbutang og something somewhat powder sa nails na by the time na mag-collect ng urine, so syempre murag ka na ganing kahig-kahirun lang ang kanang nails and then syempre yung powder mahulog na dito sa urine and then mag-negative na ang test result. So there was really a time na kana siya ang uso na way of tampering. So kaya nadagdag yung ruling na there really should be washing and drying of hair hands prior to urination. And then, checking of urine volume, temperature, color, and appearance just to really ensure na yung specimen talaga is fresh, uh, freshly collected, lalo na in terms of temperature. And then, labing, labeling of the specimen should, of course, it should always be done by placing the date and time of collection, the signature of the client, and even the authorized ASC is your authorized specimen collector, and then the specimen ID number. If in case your sample is tested, tested negative, then it should be retained 5 days after the receipt of result, after which pwede na siya discard But kung positive, adulterated, substituted, or invalid yung specimen, 15 days, kids, a minimum of 15 days, and it could be even extended up to a year. For the reason na baka may mga follow-up na testing, like in cases na gusto i-further prove, na positive yun ang sample. So, at least, ando na yung urine. Naka-preserve siya. So, anytime na need ng mga legal action, so, magamit lang po siya. And, naka-standby na. As for the analytical method, so, of course, there is a different method used for screening and confirmatory. 
screening test should always be done. Kasi nga, uh, mahal ang confirmatory test and sayang din kasi kids, if ever na nag-direct siya confirmatory and then negative good siya. So, might as well do screening test for, first just to really check if there is really presence or absence of a drug. But take note that the result of your screening test is just presumptive. Presumptive in a sense that kung mag-positive ka, hindi ibig sabihin na yung drug na talaga, may presence na talaga nung drug. Pwede kasi naman mag-positive or negative due to other reasons or other factors. Diba? Remember your false positive and false negative na mga terms. Na pwede mag-false false positive or false negative due to factors like yung may mga drug ba kayo na intake, like mga vitamins na pwede makakos na mag-positive or negative, or prior ba, increase yung water intake. Yung mga ganun na cases, kids. So, turn around time lang ng screening test is around 30 minutes. Yung testing kits nito na ginagamit, kids, siguro in a, a matter of how many minutes lang, kay mugawas naman po da ang result. But as for your confirmatory test, the turnaround time is around 15 days. So, yun, 15 days yung turnaround time ng confirmatory test. And here in your confirmatory testing, hindi lang po presence or absence ng drug. It can even identify the metabolite present and even the concentration. So, it is both quantitative and qualitative kids. And as for your drug test result, they can be used for a year. So, after a year, hindi na siya valid. So, you need to do drug test again. So, what exactly are the analytical methods done in your uh, screening test? So, these are actually immunoassays, so mga testing kits lang. Or if in case, pwede din instrumented the screening method like your ELISA, your fluorescence polarization immunoassay. Or if mag-chromatographic test mo, so it could be your thin layer chromatography or your HPLC. So, this is an example of your different testing kits to which here in the Philippines, ganito, yung parang cassette, yung ating commonly na ginagamit. So, you don't actually get to see this type of uh, immunoassay kit. And the principle of this test is actually uh, competitive binding or competitive assay. Kung baga, I know you have already performed uh, in your immunosero yung mga kits, and di ba? If dalawa yung line na nakikita nyo that is already considered positive, if isa lang, negative. But here in your drug testing, it is actually the opposite, kabaliktaran. So here, as you can see in the image, if there are two lines, it is negative. If there is only one line reflecting on the control area, then that is positive. So, dito kasi sa competitive binding kids, uh, from the term competitive, the drugs that may be present in the urine specimen will compete against the drug that is already present in your dun sa testing kit nyo. So during testing, a portion of your urine will migrate upward by capillary action. So kaya nga, uh, chromatographic yung technique nito and then tes testing kits na yung mga may pad na nakalagay. Now, here, competition, uh, stated, competition between your free drug and your immobilized drug that is already present in your kit, it will compete sa binding sa antibodies nyo. Now, in the presence of your drug, free drug binds to the antibody conjugate, preventing it from binding to your immobilized drug and therefore, no color reaction will be seen. But if there is no drug present, yung immobilized drug yun na andun na sa kit, yun yung mag-bind sa antibody nyo and mag-proproduce ng line. So, bakit may difference? Yung ating immobilized na drug or immobilized na antigen that is already present in your kit, uh, kumbaga, meron kasi yan siyang property that could impart a color once it is reacted or bound to your antibody. Unlike sa ato ang sa drugs na gusto nato i-measure coming from the specimen, wala siyang ganun na property. So, that is why opposite yung ating result sa testing kit sa screening na kung two lines siya, nagiging negative. And yung parang underlying uh, cause din nito kids is in terms of oversaturating your antibodies, causing na walang line, walang colored line na mag-appear. The presence of drug 
uh, above the cutoff concentration in the urine specimen will saturate all the binding sites of the antibody. So therefore, no colored line will form in your test region. So yun yung parang principle behind. But please be careful because if there is really no line in your control area or control na region, that is already invalid. Kaya nga siya control because this is our basis that our testing kit is still working well. If there is no longer line in your control, maski na mag-line sa test, then you need to make use of another testing kit because it might be na expired na yung ginagamit nyo. As for your confirmatory test, the gold standard will always be your GCMS, your gas chromatography mass spectrometry, in which both qualitative and quantitative determination can be done. So, mag qualitative chemical characterization sa ta. And then, if ever na nag present sa drug, proceed with the quantitation and determination of your concentration of analyte. Na as to the principle of your GCMS, uh, for sure, alam nyo na to, Kasi this is discussed in the method of detection video lecture. So, if ever nakalimutan, then just go over that video lecture. So, retesting and challenge tests can be done. And there is actually a difference between these two terms. When we say retesting, this is for the lab satisfaction for quality validation. Yung tipong magre-replicate ka lang nung test para ma-check mo yung initial test result nyo na kung talaga, talaga bang positive or negative. And there are really cases na nagre-retest po tayo, lalo na if yung ating result is a very faint na line. There are cases, kids, na may faint line na appearance dun sa both control and test nyo, or lalo na dun sa test region. And if in case na may faint na line, that is actually already considered na positive or negative. So, kung gusto natin i-validate, na meron nga talagang line dun sa test region nyo, then pwede tayo mag-retest. But, in the case of your challenge test, these are drug tests conducted as a result of a legal, yung mga legal cases or my challenge filed by an official or employee who tested positive for the drug use. And this is to replicate tests when confirmatory results are being legally questioned. So this time, since yung may gusto na mag uh, perform ng test ulit is yung complainant or yung employee ba or kung sino man yung patient na nag-positive, then they are liable to pay the testing fee. Kasi nga, it's their choice. So, this is an example of a drug test na result. And as you can see, the drug or metabolites that you see here, ki kids, are the ones that are commonly being tested here in the Philippines. Ito sila yung common, yung cocaine, ecstasy, methamphetamine, morphine, and even your tetrahydrocannabinol. Tetrahydrocannabinol is your metabolite or a potent or active na kanang metabolite sa inyuhang marijuana. And then, ayun, yung result, yung remark, and then proper uh, signatories, kung sino yung analyst, and kung sino yung head. So, for the laboratory records, everything should be present from the training record of the analyst or even sa pathologist to the custody and control form to your QA records, to your test result forms and how they are being calculated. So, everything should be placed and meron lang din po tayong certain number of uh, months or years na i-keep yung mga record ng ating mga patient and then after which pwede na rin i-discard. And then, for the validity of the license, one year lang sa screening, two years sa confirmatory lab. So, every time na mag-expire yung license, mag apply na naman ulit. And then, may mag-check na naman po ng mga authorities na to look into if, ano ba, uh, pwede pa rin ba kayo mag-continue to conduct a drug test. So, ganun ka strict yung drug testing kids. So this actually ends your clinical chemistry too in general and I do hope that you learned a lot from me even if uh, laboratory lang po tayo and please do make sure na ma-view ahead of time yung ating video lectures lalo na in terms of your methods of detection. So thank you so much for listening kids and I'll see you in our final laboratory exam.